The fallout from the weekend will rumble throughout the week, but we as a club need to look forward and make a dent in the transfer market over the next coming 10 days. In today's video, we will discuss what Fabrizio Romano has said with regards to us, whilst also taking a look at all the latest Celtic news from the last 24 hours. But first, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for daily Celtic content. In the summer of 2020, during COVID lockdowns and fat shutouts, Celtic were linked with a wealth of players. Ivan Antonio was one of the most notable names to be tipped for a move to Glasgow, but nothing ever materialised. Despite reportedly being welcomed to Lennox Town, the Englishman opted to join Brentford. On the Diary of a CEO podcast, Tony has recently revealed why he made such a decision. He said, We went to Celtic and I think it was the same there. I'm one of three strikers or something like this. At the time when it was, I was moving. I wanted to be the main guy. I think the crucial thing for me is playing games. Neil Lennon was a hoops gaffer at the time and clearly couldn't guarantee Tony a start every week when the three scoring, at least at the time, Edward and Lee Griffiths were at the club. The pair were on fire back then, but the latter faded, and if Tony had taken the gamble and joined the hoops, things could have been extremely different. The now 27-year-old would have surely nailed down a place in the start and 11 over the course of the campaign, and had he kept up the form he displayed at Brentford at Parkhead, there may have well been a different outcome to the COVID campaign for the boys. Despite this, the striker has been caught up in a betting scandal recently. He was eventually banned from football by the FA for eight months. His proposed move to Glasgow never worked out, and everything happens for a reason in life. As the transfer window hurtles towards its conclusion, Celtic fans are on tenter hooks. Under the stewardship of Brendan Rodgers, the club have made a flurry of signings, but the jury is still out on whether they'll make the grade. The mood among the supporters is a mix of cautious optimism and trepidation, with many putting their hopes in a grand finale in the last week of the transfer window. The new arrivals at Celtic Park have been a mixed bag. Hyok Kul Kwon hasn't had a look in, Marco Tilio is injured, while Odin Thiago Holmes' uninspiring display at Rugby Park left fans underwhelmed. On the other hand, Hoyun Jun Yang has shown flashes of brilliance in his cameo appearances, and there's a sense that Mark Nowaki and Gustav Legabil could become vital cogs in the Celtic machine as the season wears on. But it's not just about the players, it's about the perception. Under former boss Ange Postagoglu, deals seem to get done rather quickly and efficiently. Now with Rodgers at the helm, there's a feeling that the club is scrambling for signings as the window draws to a close. Some fans have pointed the finger at chairman Peter Lowell, suggesting that his return has made things more difficult in the transfer market. But let's not be naive, Lowell never really left and Michael Nilkerson is still the man in charge. The recent setback in the League Cup has only heightened the sense of urgency. Celtic's defeat to Kilmarnock was a wake-up call, a stark reminder that his team, once treble winners, is now in transition. As captain Callum McGregor rightfully pointed out, the team is at crossroads. With tough fixtures on the horizon, the next four weeks will be a telling, both on and off the pitch. So what can we expect in the final days of the transfer window? There is a school of thought that suggests that Celtic may be waiting for the last minute to make some top signings. As the deadline looms, players and clubs become more anxious, and deals that seem impossible suddenly become feasible. But if Celtic fails to pull a rabbit out of the hat, the mood among the supporters could quickly sour. The upcoming game at Ibrox will be a litmus test for Celtic. Two days after the transfer window closes, the clash with Rangers will set the tone for the rest of the calendar year. A win could lift the spirits of the Celtic faithful, whilst a defeat could leave them feeling disgruntled and disillusioned. There is a sense that the club needs to do more to bolster the squad. The perception of the transfer window is crucial, and the fans are eagerly awaiting some last-minute magic. As the clock ticks down, the pressure is on for Celtic to deliver. Speculation has been widespread this summer about a potential return to Celtic for Kieran Tierney. The left-back came through the academy at Lennox Town, but moved down south to Arsenal in 2019. Despite starting well in North London, the 26-year-old has recently fell out of favour. A move away from the Gunners appears most likely for Tierney this summer, and transfer guru Fabrizio Romano has provided a recent update. Romano spoke to Give Me Sport and said that the Scotland international wants to play, and that he is open to making the move to Real Sociedad happen. Romano also stated that Sociedad wants a loan with an option to buy, but the Gunners want an obligation to buy included instead. Mikel Arteta's side eventually want the former Celtic man off the books. At the minute, a return to Glasgow for Tierney seems very unrealistic. Real Sociedad can offer much greater financial advertising than the Hoops, and they play in La Liga against some top sides. 
Celtic is the defenders' boyhood club, but it may not be a time for a return yet. Maybe it is a move we can see come to fruition in years to come when he is a free agent. It's been rumbling for a while now, but new reports from Saudi Arabia claim that Jota is set to leave Al Ittihad six weeks after making a big money move to the club. This is again contrary to reports earlier on Sunday morning that he was set to stay at the club. Saudi journalist M. Bukhare has revealed that the former Celtic winger will leave, but hasn't said where the Portuguese winger will go. The speculation is he will stay in Saudi with another high rolling club and be loaned out. The wages that Jota is on means it's not really viable for a European club not to come in for him this early into his move. However, if they want to pay his wages and loan him out, I'm sure that there's still a place for him in Glasgow. Stranger things have happened, but I think we can safely say that's off the table. Celtic fell to a disappointing 1 0 defeat to Kilmarnock on Sunday afternoon. The boys can no longer land a domestic treble, and it was Brendan Rodgers' first cup loss as Celtic manager over two stints. We haven't replaced Jota yet, and the creativity and lack of penetration were there for all to see at Rugby Park. Former Celtic hero Pat Bonner has said that he expects Brendan Rodgers to tap into the transfer market before the window closes after yesterday's cup exit to Kilmarnock. Speaking post match, Bonners was critical of Celtic's performance and has said he expects Rodgers to add players who can cut it in in the upcoming Champions League campaign. Bonners said, The thing is, he's been down in England. He knows that market really, really well, but it takes money and it takes commitment from players to come up here also. But I would expect him to bring in at least two players before the Champions League to get them into a position where they were going to play and make an impact. Because he can't do it with the squad he has here now, then he will definitely need to go to the market because that was not good enough. Celtic must deliver before the transfer window closes. It sounds like a bit of a strange statement to make considering we have added six new players so far this summer, but it is true. The early signs show that the new recruits may well struggle against Europe's elite players at this moment in time. Brennan Rodgers' additions may well become very good players with Celtic as they settle into the club, but when it comes to the Champions League, we need ready-made quality to help us try and progress. But it is this way, look at how we performed last season under Ange Postecoglou with a settled Celtic side. Yes, we got plaudits for our playing style and having a go, but ultimately we were still on the wrong end of a few sore results. Whilst domestically there is no need to push the panic button, how this side is performing at the moment in time leaves me looking at the Champions League with a sense of foreboding. Unless we add players who are capable of performing at that level now. So it's over to Brendan Rodgers and the Celtic board. There are less than two weeks to go until the transfer window closes and the clock is ticking. Celtic fans, what do you make of our transfer business so far this summer? Let me know down in the comment section below. That brings us to the end of today's video guys. Make sure you drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel for more Celtic content. Remember, we have released our brand new Celtic t-shirts with our Brendan Rodgers Pope t-shirt and our Celtic Ultra t-shirts too. You can find them at CelticApparel.com or just go down to the link in the description. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye.